Hi, this is PV Diagrams in Thermodynamics Problem Solving Part 2. And this is the second of the two problems that I am working out from your homework to illustrate use of PV Diagrams to organize problem solving approach in thermodynamics. So this is the harder question and it's harder not because the calculations are more difficult but because of the detailed almost tedious level of um, work that's involved in solving this question. So let me write down a couple equations that will be important as we are working through this question. That's first law of thermodynamics and the ideal gas law. So let me write it down. Oh, and I guess I should write down as a reminder how work is being treated in thermodynamics. Work is pressure times change of volume. So the very first question relates to this work that I just wrote down, which is why I wrote it down. Um, so it says, find the work done in each of the processes A, B, B, C, A, D, and D, C. So since this is how work is defined, it's a matter of finding the area under the curve. So um, two processes, A, B, and D, C are simple. It's a vertical lines, so there's no area under the curve. So they both do zero joules of work, A, B, and D, C. It's the B, C, and A, D, where you have to do a little more calculation. So for B, C, the area under the curve is this. So you need to calculate the pressure, 5 atmosphere, times this difference in volume, 7 minus 3 liters. Now, for the answers for the homework website, you should convert it to SI units and um, plug in the answer in joules. But here for this video, let me work it out in the units of atmosphere times liter because I have to do this in my head and you can do the unit conversion. So the work done here would be 5 times 4, so 20 atmosphere liter, not joule. All right, that's easy enough. The work done in the process AD is very similar, except it's at lower pressure. So let me sketch that area under that curve. So that's from 3 to 7 liters under 2 atmosphere. The volume difference is the same, 4 liters. So it's 2 atmosphere times 4 liters or 8 atmosphere liter. That's it. And um, part of the tedious problem solving here is we want to save all this work. We're going to need them all eventually later. So let's not delete any of it. And uh, keep it on the page so that we can use it later. Now, part B asks for the change in the internal energy in the processes A, B, and B, C. And since it's looking for internal energy, what we are really looking for is temperature. Because once we know temperature, then we can get internal energy by this formula, 3 halves NKT for monatomic gas. And in fact, it's not actually the temperature we would like to solve for. It's actually the whole quantity NKT that we want. Then we don't have to solve separately for number of molecules and we can just solve for NKT. And this is where I hope you feel lucky because NKT is one of the terms in the ideal gas law. So really the internal energy at point A is pressure times volume times 3 halves or 3 halves pressure to atmosphere times volume 3 liters or nine atmosphere liters. Now, of course, you should uh, calculate this in SI units so that you have your answer in units of joules. 
we can also calculate uh, internal energy at B, and that's 5 atmosphere times 3 liters, divide by 2, multiply by 3, uh, 22.5 atmosphere liter. So the question asks for the difference in the internal energy. So it's that difference right there. So the difference is 13.5 atmosphere liter. Once again, you should convert this to SI unit. And the change in internal energy from B to C is also similarly simple. Because for internal energy, once again, all you care about is the temperature. Now, um, there are some details that are different. Going from A to B, there's a zero work done. Going from B to C, there is work being done. But those details don't actually matter for the internal energy. For the internal energy, all that counts is the temperature. So we do the exact same thing for internal energy at point C. So it's uh, 3 halves times pressure times volume. Or working out all the numbers, I think 52.5 atmosphere liter. So the difference here between B and C is then 30 atmosphere liter. That's it. Now, all this information we are calculating is going to be needed for the next part. All right. So part C is where all this work was building up to. It says find the total heat added in ABC. That's the upper path. Um, and the ADC, that's the lower path, ADC processes. And uh, we have worked out all the pieces we need for ABC path. So let me show you how it's uh, put together. So what we are going to use here is we are going to use the first law of thermodynamics. To make it easy for ourselves, let's uh, solve it for heat. So heat is equal to change in internal energy plus work done by gas. As you see in the saved work, we have all the internal energies from A to B to C. But really the only thing we need is change from A to C, the total change. So we got that change in internal energy. And we need the work done in the path from A to B to C. So that would be work done over AB plus work done over BC. So I think we can plug in the numbers. Plugging in the numbers, the change in the internal energy is 52.5 minus 9, so 43.5 atmosphere liter. And the work done is plus 20 atmosphere liter. So for path ABC, the total heat added must be 63.5. Once again, atmosphere liter, you should convert it for your answers. And actually, we have done most of the work for the lower path ADC as well, because we can continue to use the same difference in the internal energy. As long as the end points are the same, change in the internal energy is the same. So the only thing that changes is how much work is done. Instead of 20 atmosphere liter, only 8 atmosphere liter of work was done in the path ADC. So um, the total heat added must be 43.5 plus 8, 51.5 atmosphere liter. So that's it. Now, what could have made this question difficult is imagine you are simply asked this part to see, which is a thing someone could do. Then you had to remember that you have to go through these steps in A and B in order to find the heat. Because the way you find the heat is by using the first law of thermodynamics. And to use it, you need to figure out the change in internal energy and you need to figure out the work done. So that's it. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. 
and I will see you for chapter 4. Bye.